I'm here to talk to you a little bit about your English options for forecasting. Remember to talk to your current English teacher or to your previous English teacher to make sure they know what class you're forecasting into. A current freshman and going into sophomore year, you have two choices, either 10th grade English or honors 10th grade. Uh, 10th grade would be a continuation of 9th grade English. Uh, honors is a little more rapid, more homework. Uh, more skills being built at a quicker pace. Both are college readiness classes. For sophomores going into their junior year, you have 11th grade English, which is a continuation of 9th and 10th grade English, and AP Literature and Composition, English 104, 5, and 6. This is a dual credit class where you will get college credits as well as high school credits for English. The level is much higher and more rigorous, so if you were in honors classes, this would probably be where you'd be going. If you're in mainstream classes and you really want to challenge yourself, talk to your current teacher to see if that's the class for you. Uh, there's one class open for juniors and seniors to forecast into, and that's Reading 115, Writing 115, which is a dual credit class. And then for seniors, you have the choice of either taking Senior English, Reading 115, Writing 115, like I previously said, uh, Writing 121, Writing 122, and Writing 115 and 121. The purple classes here are dual credit classes, and they are classes where you would get CGCC credit as well as high school credit. They're uh, more rigorous classes than senior English, but uh, they all have their own unique takes on what, uh, what it takes to succeed as a student. So please talk to your current English teacher to see where you should be forecasting. You can also look on the Academic Planning Guide, which can be found on the HRV website for descriptions of all of these classes. We're going to end with looking in-depth at our elective choices. As you can see in the box here, there are five elective choices that are dual credit and one elective choice that is only credit at the high school. The first class we're going to be talking about is Technical and Professional Communication, Writing 227. You can take this class for dual credit and earn four college credits through Columbia Gorge Community College. This class is a little different from traditional English classes. We do not work on essays. We work on real world writing, the kind of writing you do in the workplace. Emails, letters, memos, but no essays. We focus on clear communication. You can earn college credit while still in high school. Learn about the most common workplace and technical writing communications. Hello, I'm here to talk to you today about the course Public Speaking. This course introduces speech making based on a traditional public speaking approach. It will help students in developing a theoretical understanding and practical application of oral communication skills. This course includes techniques for also controlling speech anxiety and how to organize information to present to a variety of audiences and finally, also physical and vocal delivery skills. Another thing to remember, this class is required for anyone seeking to complete the AAOT or our associate's transfer degree. Thank you. English 250, the Introduction to Folklore and Mythology, is a class offered at HRVHS. Uh, for any students really interested in mythologies, whether that's Greek or Norse, African, Native, Japanese, uh, we cover a lot of ground over a short period in this trimester class. Uh, it's a lot of fun for students who want to widen the range of uh, readings or for students that really have thoroughly enjoyed mythology their whole life and want to talk about it with other people that really... Uh, have a passion for mythology. So if it sounds interesting to you, please talk to Mr. Yasui, who's teaching it this trimester, or uh, anyone in the English department. Thank you. Do you like talking about books? Latin American literature is the elective for you. Uh, it is open to 10th, 11th, and 12th grade students. We will be studying literature, so novels, poetry, memoir by Latin American authors. And this is also a dual credit class, so you can earn college credits for free, four college credits for free for the class English 213. It's a great opportunity to meet your cultural literacy requirement, required by a lot of programs. And it's a great class to come together, talk, and learn about books, particularly written by Latin American authors. In Film as Art, we talk about what literature is and does it have to be something that you read? So can films be literature? How and why uh, are they studied by people? 
Uh, can films be better at storytelling than literature? Why do films get you to feel the emotions that you're feeling? How is their storytelling um, enhanced by uh, literature, literary techniques? It's a semester-long course. Uh, it's open to students in grades 10, 11, 12. We watch films in class and then discuss them. So if you're interested in watching movies uh, at school, this would be the class for you. So creative writing is an awesome opportunity for students who like to write and tell stories. Uh, lots of times students are writing in your free time and you're needing an audience or you're hoping to hone your craft and creative writing is the perfect opportunity for that. Whether it's uh, short stories or poems or plays, um, you're going to learn the process and new techniques for the best kind of storytelling and you'll have an audience. It is a great opportunity for writers or people who are just interested in learning about writing. Hi, so I'm Mr. Taktai, and I'm going to be talking about forecasting for next year. If you are in Algebra 1 and you pass, you're going to be forecasted into Geometry. If you don't pass, you're going to be forecasted into Principles of Algebra. If you pass, if you're currently in Geometry and you pass with a C or better, you're going to be forecasted into an Algebra 2. But you also have an option to go into contemporary topics if you're going to be a junior or math and society if you're going to be a senior. If you're in Algebra 2 and you pass with a, um, a or B, you have some options. Let's face over. If you pass with an A or B in Algebra 2, you can take either AB stats or advanced algebra trick. Or in some cases, you can go to pre-calculus. And AB stats and honors, pre-calc, and the calculus classes are all due credit. So is math and society, if I can say that again. If you're having a hard time with Algebra 2, you also have the option to go to contemporary topics as a junior or uh, math and society as a senior. And when you're in the advanced classes, it's uh, pretty you know, easy what you're going to take or what you're going to be forecasted in. If you're in AP stats, you actually have more, you know, more choices. Because if you're in AP stats right now and you pass with the A or B, you, if you, you have the option to take either advanced algebra trig or pre-calculus if you haven't taken that one. Um, but if you're in advanced algebra trig, you're going to go into pre-calculus. If you're in pre-calculus, you're going to go to um, calc AB. If you're in calc AB, you're going to go to calc BC. But if you're in any of these four classes right now, advanced algebra trig, pre-calculus, calc AB, or calc BC, if you haven't taken AP stats yet, you can take that next year. So um, that's pretty much it. You can also take um, Ag, Power, and Tech for other math credits too. So good luck with your forecasting. And you can uh, talk it over with your teacher to see what you're going to be forecasting. Thanks. Hi, my name is Dave Case. I teach social studies here. Um, in the social studies department, we teach you to interpret the human experience and understand the world around you so that you can be a happier and more successful human being. There are three years of required of social studies at HRV. Um, the first year is a global studies credit, but there's no class called global studies. You take one of you take uh, a selection of classes to fulfill that requirement. We have several term long classes that will get you a half a credit each, um, and you have to have a full credit. All right. So those classes are pretty self explanatory in their titles. They are women in world history, world geography. 20th century world history, Latin American studies, and contemporary world issues. In con uh, to be in contemporary world issues, you have to be at least a sophomore. So you can take a mix of those classes in order to fulfill your, your global studies requirement. Um, another way to get your global studies requirement is to take AP Human Geography. AP Human Geography is a, is a two-term class, so it's a full credit. And um, it is an AP class, so it's got a difficult, or a, it's got a college textbook, right? And it has uh, two to four hours of homework a week. 
your junior year, you are supposed to take two terms of U.S. history. You can fulfill this requirement by taking U.S. history or AP U.S. history. AP U.S. history is a, has a, a college-level textbook, so you need to be ready to read. And you also will have two to four hours of homework a week. Um, you can get some college credit for AP U.S. history. Um, your senior year, you would take um, economics, and which is one term long, and you would take government, which is also one term long. There's also an AP government class, so you can take that for the more rigorous class that has some homework. Um, and those two classes fulfill the last um, year of required social studies at HRV. We have a couple of other um, electives in the department that you can take. One of them is introduction to law. And the other one is journalism, which isn't really a social studies class, but I teach it and I'm a social studies teacher. So um, we make the what's up and those sorts of things. Um, if you have any questions, you should come talk to me. I'm in room C10 or any of the social studies teachers who are all in the H hall across from the gymnasium. Um, okay. Uh, I'm Ted Kramer. I'm a science teacher here, here at Hood River Valley High School. Hi, and I'm Mrs. Davis, and I am also a science teacher here at the high school. Okay, so we're here today to talk to you guys about the courses that the science department offers, and we've put together a few slides to try and help you understand your way through. So I'm going to describe this first slide. Uh, your ninth grade year, you're either taking patterns physics or honors chemistry. And the decision there is mostly on your uh, math placement. If you're in algebra, you're taking patterns. And if you're beyond algebra, you're taking honors chemistry. And then there's no doubling up. And then your 10th grade year, if you took patterns your freshman year, you take chemistry your sophomore year. If you took chemistry your freshman year, then you're taking biology your sophomore year. The kid, you can double up if you want to. So the kids that are in 10th grade taking chemistry, you can double up and take biology. If you're taking biology, you can double up and take uh, either physics or one of the AP physics classes. Your junior level year, it just becomes the next step there. If you started with patterns, then you would have taken chemistry. And so that 11th grade year, we want you guys to take biology. If you started your freshman year taking honors chemistry, then you took biology. And so your 11th grade year, we want you to take one of the physics classes. You're also able, available to uh, you know take as many of the other uh, elective options in the science department as you like. And then your 12th grade year, since you're only required to take three science credits, which we expect to be a chemistry, a biology, and a physics class, and then any other classes that you want, your 12th grade year, you can take more science or you can be done either way you want. Uh, we obviously would like you to take more science classes than less, but you're only required to get three credits uh, to graduate from high school. Go ahead, Ms. Davis, with the next slide. All right, I think, okay, so we have a couple just quick flow charts to help you think about where you should go next. If you're currently in patterns physics as a freshman and you're interested in doubling up as a sophomore, then you would be choosing both chemistry and biology for your sophomore year class. If you don't want to double up, then you would be moving into chemistry. So then your sophomore year or your freshman year, depending on if you're already in honors chemistry or chemistry, if you want to double up, you would take biology and one of the physics classes, either physics or AP physics one or two. If you don't want to double up, then you would take biology. All right, and those of you who are currently in biology, uh, first check and see, have you had your physics class? Because a lot of students in biology may not have had patterns physics. So you could go on to take um, physics or AP physics and we also want to mention that if you took patterns physics as a freshman, you are still eligible to take more physics later if it's a subject you enjoy. You can also join that physics or AP physics class. Um, this is the point where you really um, are opened up to many electives. You can see we have a large um, number of electives in the science department. We have AP biology, AP chemistry, AP environmental science. We also have earth science, geology of the Pacific Northwest, research genetics and bioethics. And we also included the computer science classes here as well to let you know about those exploring computer science and AP computer science. Um, we want to mention that all these classes are one full credit classes, um, with the exception of the geology of the Pacific Northwest, that is a half credit, as well as exploring computer science is a half credit. If you want to learn more about these electives, one way you can do that is um, in this slideshow, which will be shared with you in your graduation year Google Classroom. There are more slides that explain um, more about each class and what topics are covered. 
You're also welcome to talk to your current science teacher and ask them any questions you have about what class you should take next year or what those classes are like, what kind of topics they cover and um, what the level of rigor is like. So we look forward to seeing you in our science classes and please let us know if you have any questions.